today I am taking up the topic genetics part one today I deal with introduction to mannerism and some genetic terminology without knowing this terminology it is very difficult to follow genetics so please listen carefully and follow the meaning of various terms employed in genetics so here we have to remember about Mendel, Gregor, Johann or Johann Mendel, an Austrian monk. He conducted experiments which are known as hybridization experiments on a plant known as <coughs> Pisum sativum, garden pea, commonly known as garden pea. His experiments were conducted from the year 1856 to 1863 and his results were published in the year 1866. Nobody bothered to understand or follow the laws discovered by Mendel because at that time all the scientists were interested in the theory of natural selection proposed by Charles Darwin and nobody bothered to study or know about Mendel's laws. His laws were rediscovered in the year 1900 by three scientists independently. They are T. H. Morgan, Quarrens and Vaughan Shermark. Only in the year 1900 the importance of Mendel's laws came into the scientific world. Then, what did Mendel discover? He discovered fundamental laws of inheritance in living organisms. He discovered fundamental laws of inheritance in living organisms which are applicable universally to all the living beings, whether plants or animals or bacteria, whatever it may be, they are applicable universally to all the living organisms and the laws of Mendel are now known as Mendelism. Mendelism. He, Mendel is also considered as the father of genetics. Then, before Mendel also, scientists studied how the characters are inherited from one generation to the next generation, but they could not succeed. Then why did Mendel succeed? It means he applied for the first time to the problems of biology, the mathematical logic and also the statistical analysis. So by applying mathematical logic and statistical analysis, you could understand how characters are inherited in living organisms. Then, he also used large sample size. See, if the sample size is small, the errors will be more. If the sample size is large, the errors are minimized because he used a large sample size he could arrive at the right conclusions. He was also very lucky because he selected the garden pea plant, Pisum sativum, which has seven pairs of chromosomes. Mendel selected seven pairs of characters for his experiments. Fortunately for him, the genes for these seven traits are either present on different chromosomes or when present on the same chromosome, they are not closely linked. They are spaced wide apart on the same chromosome. So he did not face the problems of linkage, interaction of genes, cumulative effect of cumulative genes, six linked inheritance, etc. So one way, Mentor was very, very lucky. Then, what, were, what are the seven pairs of characters Mendel selected for his experiments? I have given a list here. 
ఫస్ట్ వన్ స్టెమ్ లెంగ్త్ సి వన్ మోర్ పాయింట్ అప్పుడు గార్డెన్ పీ ప్లాంట్ ఈస్ ఇట్ ఎగ్జిబిట్స్ ఏ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ కాంట్రాస్టింగ్ ట్రైట్స్ కాంట్రాస్టింగ్ ట్రైట్స్ మీన్స్ అపోజింగ్ సమ్ ప్లాంట్స్ గ్రో వెరీ టాల్ సమ్ ప్లాంట్స్ ఆర్ వెరీ షార్ట్ దే ఆర్ కాల్ డార్క్ ప్లాంట్స్ లైక్ దాట్ దే ఎగ్జిబిట్ సెవెన్ ఏ నెంబర్ ఆఫ్ కాంట్రాస్టింగ్ ట్రైట్స్ అండ్ మెండల్ సెలెక్టెడ్ సెవెన్ ది సక్సెస్ ఆఫ్ ఏ సైంటిస్ట్ లైస్ ఆన్ ద సెలెక్షన్ ఆఫ్ హిస్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంటల్ మెటీరియల్ ఆల్సో ఇన్ దట్ వే ఆల్సో మెండల్ వాజ్ లకీ హి సెలెక్టెడ్ ద గార్డెన్ పీ బికాస్ దట్ ప్లాంట్ ఈస్ వెరీ ఈజీ టు కల్టివేట్ దెన్ ఇన్ దిస్ ప్లాంట్ సెల్ఫ్ ఫెర్టిలైజేషన్ అకర్డ్స్ నాచురల్లీ సెల్ఫ్ ఫెర్టిలైజేషన్ అకర్డ్స్ బట్ ఇఫ్ యూ వాంట్ క్రాస్ ఫెర్టిలైజేషన్ కెన్ బీ క్యారీడ్ అవుట్ వితౌట్ ఎనీ ప్రాబ్లం దెన్ ది కాంట్రాస్టింగ్ ట్రైట్స్ ఎగ్జిబిటెడ్ బై ద ప్లాంట్ ఆర్ ఈజీ టు ఫాలో ఫ్రమ్ జనరేషన్ టు జనరేషన్ ఆర్ ఫ్రమ్ వన్ జనరేషన్ టు ది నెక్స్ట్ జనరేషన్ లైక్ దట్ ది ప్లాంట్ హ్యాస్ మెనీ అడ్వాంటేజెస్ నౌ లెట్ ఎస్ సీ ది సెవెన్ పేట్స్ ఆఫ్ ట్రైట్స్ సెలెక్టెడ్ బై మెండల్ ఫార్ హిజ్ హైబ్రిడైజేషన్ ఎక్స్పెరిమెంట్స్ స్టెమ్ లెంగ్ సమ్ ప్లాంట్స్ హ్యావ్ లాంగ్ స్టెమ్ సమ్ హ్యావ్ ఏ షార్ట్ స్టెమ్ జస్ట్ బై సీయింగ్ ఏ ప్లాంట్ యూ కెన్ సీ ఇట్ ఇస్ ఎ టాల్ ప్లాంట్ ఆర్ ఎ డార్క్ ప్లాంట్ అండ్ దీస్ ప్లాంట్స్ దే బ్రీడ్ ట్రూ ఈ టాల్ ప్లాంట్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ చేసే ఓన్లీ టాల్ ప్లాంట్స్ ఇన్ నేచర్ అండ్ ఏ డ్వాస్ ప్లాంట్ ప్రొడ్యూస్ చేసే ఓన్లీ ఏ డ్వాస్ ప్లాంట్స్ ఇన్ నేచర్ నెక్స్ట్ వన్ సీడ్ షేప్ సమ్ సీడ్స్ ఆర్ రౌండ్ సమ్ ఆర్ రింకిల్డ్ సీడ్ కలర్ ద కలర్ మే బి yellow or green. పాడ్ color. Green or yellow. పాడ్ షేప్ ఇన్ఫ్లేటెడ్ ఆర్ కన్స్ట్రిక్టెడ్ ఫ్లవర్ పొజిషన్ యాక్సియల్ ఆర్ టెర్మినల్ ఫ్లవర్ కలర్ వైలెట్ ఆర్ వైట్ ఇన్ దిస్ వే ఈ సెలెక్టెడ్ సెవెన్ పేట్స్ ఆఫ్ కాంట్రాస్టింగ్ క్యారెక్టర్స్ యూ మస్ లిజన్ కేర్ఫుల్లీ ది ఫస్ట్ లిస్ట్ దిస్ లిస్ట్ ఆర్ నోన్ యాజ్ డామినెంట్ క్యారెక్టర్స్ ఆర్ డామినెంట్ ట్రేడ్స్ these are recessive traits that means tallness is a dominant trait uh, trait and dwarfness is a recessive trait similarly round shape is dominant and the wrinkled shape is recessive like that all these seven are dominant traits these are recessive traits now let us know some of the genetic terminology gene what is a gene gene is the basic unit of inheritance basic unit of inheritance for a given trait or character then alleles what are alleles alternative forms of a gene are known as alleles what is alternative forms a gene may be for tallness or for dwarfness so these two traits are due to alternative forms of a gene and the alleles occupy the same locus and a homologous chromosome i will show you just by, i will rub this one i have drawn a pair of homologous chromosomes what are homologous chromosomes the homologous chromosomes are similar to each other and they are inherited one from each parent so let us say this is paternal chromosome 
This is a maternal chromosome. So we inherit paternal chromosome from father and the maternal chromosome from mother. This pair of homologous chromosomes have the same genes in the same order upon them. Suppose if there is a gene A here, we find gene A here also. If you find a gene B here, here also you find gene B. So the homologous chromosomes, same genes are present in the same sequence, in the same order. Then, these two genes A are known as alleles. Similarly, B, B, these genes are also known as alleles. So, alleles are the genes occupying the same locus on the homologous chromosomes. Here we have to learn two more terms. If the alleles are the same or identical, we call them as homozygous alleles. These are homozygous. If the alleles are different, let's say the A, the B and small b. These are known as heterozygous. So these two genes are alternate forms. One is a dominant gene, one is a recessive gene. So in this way, alleles are the alternate forms of the same gene and they occupy the same locus on the homologous chromosomes. And why different types of alleles occur? It is due to mutations. There may be a number of alleles. Let us say capital B, small b, small b1, small b2, small b3 like that. But in an organism, there is a place only for two alleles. Even though alleles are many in number, only two alleles can occur in an individual or in an organism. So these points you must remember very carefully. We will be repeating these terms again and again as we proceed through the topics included in genetics. So what are alleles? Alleles occupy the same locus on homologous chromosomes. And if they are identical, we call them as homozygous. If they are different in their expression, we call them as heterozygous. Then, locus. The position of a gene on the chromosome is known as its locus. And it means its position. So this is the locus of gene A, this is the locus of gene B. So locus means the position of a gene on a chromosome. Homologous, I already have explained, in diploid condition, in which the alleles are of the same nature, A, A. Sometimes both the genes are mutated and we get this recessive gene here and its recessive gene. So this condition is also homogeneous. So when both the genes are of the same nature, that means either they are dominant or recessive, that condition is known as homozygous. If one is dominant, one is recessive, we call them as heterozygous. So homozygous means the deployed condition in which the alleles are of the same nature, capital A, capital A or small a, small a. Heterozygous, the diploid condition in which the alleles are of different nature. This one. Capital A, small a, or capital B, small b. Phenotype. 
Phenotype means the observable, observable traits or characteristics in an individual. So, the physical appearance, the external appearance is known as phenotype. Suppose you take this plant. Just by seeing the plant, you can say it is a tall plant or a dwarf plant. That means it is a phenotype. If you distinguish a particular trait, just by observing, then it is known as phenotypic trait. Genotype. The genetic constitution of an individual. Here we take into account the genes. So, in the, type, in the case of genotypic condition, the genetic constitution of an individual is taken. See here, capital T, capital T. This is tallness. Homogeneous, dominant. Small t, small t. Homogeneous, recessiveness or dwarf. Capital T, small t. It is heterogeneous. So, by the composition of the genes, we can say whether a plant is homozygous or heterozygous. <coughs> then dominant. The allele which influences the appearance of the phenotype, even in the presence of an alternative allele, is known as dominant allele. So, other I have explained. B is dominant over, capital B is dominant over small b. That means, even in the presence of the recessive allele, the dominant allele expresses its nature. For example, you take a tall plant and dwarf plant. Tallness is represented by the gene capital T and it is represented by small t. A plant having both the dominant and recessive genes expresses only the dominant trait in spite of the presence of this gene. That means the dominant gene suppresses the activity of the recessive gene. So dominant gene is the one that suppresses the activity of the recessive gene. So in a, in a heterogeneous condition, always the dominant train appears and the recessive trait is suppressed. That we will see later on. So recessive, the allele which influences the appearance of the phenotype only in the presence of another identical allele. So again we come back here. When does the plant will be dwarf? Only when both the alleles are recessive in nature. So a recessive trait appears only when both the alleles are of the recessive type or recessive nature. Then, F1 generation. F means filial. F1 means first filial generation. It means the generation produced by crossing homozygous parental stock. Here we have to remember one point about Mendel again. Mendel used only pure plants or pure breeding plants. What does it mean? He used only the plants that produce only either this trait or this trait. Trait. This trait or this trait. Either completely tall or completely dwarf. That means a tall plant produces generation after generation only tall plants. No dwarf plants appears in their progeny. Similarly, a dwarf plant produces only dwarf plants generation after generation. And no tall plant appears in them. Like that, they maintain their purity in nature. The plants are pure. They maintain their purity. They give rise to the progeny of the same nature, generation after generation. So here, F1 generation, here, homogeneous parental stock is used. 
Homogeneous means both the genes are dominant in one plant and the, both the genes are recessive in another plant. So, this is called the parental generation. They produce young ones. So, the progeny resulting from the parents of this genotype are known as F1 generation. F1 generation organisms are always hybrids because they carry one dominant allele and one recessive allele. So they, they receive one gene from this parent, capital dominant gene, and one gene from the other parent, a recessive gene. So hybrids are, or F1 generation of plants are known as, or organisms are known as hybrids. They exhibit hybrid vigor. You will be knowing more about hybrid vigor when you take up the plants and animal breeding. Hybrid vigor means they grow rapidly. Not all, but some. They grow rapidly. They produce larger fruits. They yield more number of fruits. Or they give more milk. The animals grow faster like that. Hybrid vigor is exhibited by F1 plants. Hybrid vigor is also known as heterosis. Heterosis. F2 generation. F2 means second filial generation. So the progeny of the F1 generation. The progeny of F1 generation is known as F2 generation. So F2 generation is produced by crossing two F1 plants or two F1 organisms. In plants, this is carried out by self-fertilizing, through self-fertilization. Then the important one, test cross. There is a tall plant. It may be homozygous or heterozygous or it may carry both the dominant genes or one dominant gene or residue gene. This is pure tall plant. This is a fertile plant. But both the plants will be the same if you look at their appearance. But how to know their genotype? To know the genotype of the dominant trait, what we do? We always cross that organism with a double recessive parent. So the organism under investigation is crossed with the double recessive parent to find out its purity or the genotype. It helps in finding out whether a dominant phenotype is homozygous or heterozygous for that trait. So by crossing the organism under investigation with the double recessive parent, we can decide the genotype of that plant under investigation. We will study that test cross later on in detail. Then back cross. In the case of these two are different. Don't get confused with the test cross and the back cross. In the test cross, always the plant or organism under investigation is crossed with a double recessive parent. But in the case of test cross, in the back cross, the organism, that is the F1 offspring, is always crossed with either of the parents. So in a cross in which the F1 offspring is crossed with either of the parents. So this is the F1. Here this is the F1. In this case, the F1 offspring is crossed with dominant parent or homozygous dominant parent. Here, F1 organism is crossed with double recessive parent. So this is called back cross. Then there is one again, reciprocal cross. Suppose in a cross, let's take again tall and dwarf plants. In one cross, pollen is taken from tall plant and used in fertilizing the ova of the eggs of dwarf plant. Reciprocal cross means just it is reversible. In this case, 
Pollen and grains are taken from dwarf plants and used on the tall plant. So this reproductive class means a cross in which sex of each phenotype is reversed. So in this case, pollen and grains are collected from the tall plant and used on the dwarf plants. So in the reciprocal class, pollen and grains are collected from the dwarf plants and used on the tall plant. Then, mono hybrid cross. If you study the inheritance of only one pair of alleles, only one pair of alleles, it is known as monohybrid cross. Again, we come back here. I have drawn two alleles here, two pairs of alleles, A, A, B, B. If you consider the inheritance of only these two genes, without bothering other genes, this is called monohybrid cross. So in monohybrid cross, the inheritance of only one pair of alleles is undertaken or studied. In dihybrid cross, the inheritance of two alleles is taken up. So if you study the inheritance of both A and B genes together, A and B genes together, it constitutes dihybrid cross. We will be studying in detail about the monohybrid cross and dihybrid cross. Recombination. You know that recombination occurs during meiotic cell division. Where the homologous chromosomes come together and exchange exact segments from each other. It means the maternal and paternal chromosomes exchange genes during crossing over in meiosis 1. That process leads to recombination. Suppose if these two genes exchange, then what happens? This, this two gene will come here and this dominant gene will come here. Or this may go here and this may come here. See on a chromosome we find thousands of genes and the genes are shuffled. Just like shuffling a pack of cards, genes are shuffled, shuffled during crossing over. And that is called recombination of genes. So exchange of similar segments of DNA between the homologous chromosomes during a meiotic division 1. It leads to new genotypic combinations. We will be studying in detail about this point later on. Linkage. Link means joining two things together. So here, linkage means genes are present on the chromosomes. If this is the chromosome, genes are present one after one on the chromosome like this. This is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven genes I have drawn. The genes are arranged in the linear order. Linear order means one after one. They are arranged one after one along the length of the chromosome. This is called linking. That means genes present on a chromosome are linked together. Then here we have to remember two points. Some genes are closely linked. You take the gene 1 and 2. They are very close. They are closely linked. You take the gene 1 and 7. They are not closely linked. So genes are either linked closely or linked loosely or widely separated from each other. If the genes are closely linked, there is a chance of those genes Travelling together, travelling together during crossing over. If the genes are widely separated, there is a likelihood of separation of those genes during crossing over. That is about linkage. Core dominance. Here we have seen complete dominance, total dominance. Tallness dominates over the dwarfness. 
no intermediate forms appear when a dominant gene is present along with the recessive gene the recessive gene is suppressed completely and only the dominant gene expresses that is called total dominance or complete dominance but in the case of incomplete dominance here the dominant gene or one gene cannot dominate over the other gene that means both the genes are of equal strength so both of them express but when both the genes express what we happens what do we get we get an intermediate trait see here it results when two alleles controlling the same trait fail to dominate over the other allele and as a result an intermediate trait appears so when both the genes are of equal strength they cannot dominate over each other and as a result an intermediate trait is formed there is a beautiful example here there is a plant known as antirhinum or snapdragon in this species some plants produce only pink flowers in nature i am talking about the nature in nature some plants produce only pink flowers sorry 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 not that one some plants produce only red flowers and some plants produce only white flowers generation after generation so in nature in the case of snapdragon one type of plants produce or one variety one uh, variety of plants produce only red flowers and other variety produce only white flowers what happens if a cross fertilization is carried out between these two phenotypes if you carry out a cross fertilization between a pure red flower producing plant and a pure white flower producing plant what do we get we get plants or progeny that produce only pink flowers pink color is intermediate between red and white then when the parents are of red color are producing red flowers or white flowers so why the f1 progeny is producing pink flowers it is because of incomplete dominance so both the genes are of equal strength they cannot dominate over each other and as a result and as a compromise the intermediate color that is pink color appears then homogametic and heterogametic homo means identical hetero means different if an organism produces only one type of gamete it is known as homozygosity or homogametic they produce only one type of gamete homogametic you take human beings females produce only one type of gamete that means all the gametes carry only x sex chromosome males produce two types of sperms half of the sperms carry the sex chromosome x and the other half carry the y chromosome so here i have drawn here this is the gamete of females a means autosomes autosomes are the same in both males and females the difference lies only in the sex chromosome in the females the gametes carry haploid number of autosomes and one x chromosome or one x sex chromosome coming to males half the sperms carry one set of autosomes and one x chromosome and other half of the sperms carry one set of autosomes and y chromosome that means here two types of sperms are produced so if an organism produces only one type of gamete it is known as homogametic if it produces two types of gametes it is called heterogametic so these are some of the important terminology associated with genetics so without understanding these terms 
it is not easy to follow the loss of inheritance and other topics involved in involved under the chapter genetics that's all for today thank you